Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to VHS. I'm your host, Jesse. Today, got a little work to do. Quentin Tarantino could be described as movies in human form. You ever see one of those anime series where the characters are fighting against the living embodiment of pain or sadness? Well, Tarantino is like the living embodiment of movies, which is why it's sort of frustrating that he only made 10. But which of those 10 do we need to see? Could any of them be worth avoiding completely? Here at VHS, we use a simple three-tiered system to rank movies. Must see. You must see this movie. I thought I was being clear. Must see. We get it. We saw the movie. Yeah, we saw it. Or someone we know saw it. We heard about it. It's like the other ones, right? We get it. Nope. Is there a nope in here? Does Tarantino have a full-on nope? You know what I like about this one? They got it in actual chronological order. This is the first one I've done where whoever made the tier, thank you for all the people that make these tiers, by the way. I'm not doing this. They actually got it in chronological order, so that's very helpful. Reservoir Dogs. Don't play games with me. You must see Reservoir Dogs. You've seen Reservoir Dogs. The truth is, we've probably all seen it. A lot of us watched it when we were teenagers and we're like, yeah, there's a lot of talking, but then there's a lot of shooty shooty and that's really cool too. As you get older, you watch Reservoir Dogs again. There's just so much incredible interplay between the actors. The script is wild. It's basically a one location movie and it's just riveting, riveting stuff. The beginning of this career is so, so promising. And there's no misstep here of Pulp Fiction. I personally am gonna keep it in this order. This is me. Reservoir Dogs, I will watch more often than Pulp Fiction. I think it's much more exciting, to be honest. Pulp Fiction is sort of like the big thesis paper that Tarantino turns in, you know, like at the end of the term, and it covers all the different sections that he learned that year, and he aces it, he totally aces it, but man, Reservoir Dogs is like the thing that he wrote that got him into this school. You know what I mean? It's like, you could not deny Reservoir Dogs. So Pulp Fiction's a number two for me. Jackie Brown is, is honestly a we get it. Some people have Jackie Brown as a nope. I've actually heard people that have Jackie Brown as a full on nope. It's a little slow, but geez, he loves that movie. You can tell Tarantino is out of his mind happy to be working with Pam Greer. He cannot believe he has Pam Greer. You know he grew up watching all those black exploitation movies. He's seen coffee a hundred times. He cannot believe he's working with Jackie Brown. And and he really, he really does that love comes through. It's still just a we get it. It's a we get it. It's De Niro's kind of quiet and weird. Sam Jackson's honestly kind of forgettable almost, other than the ponytail. But <sighs> all right. Kill Bill 1 is a must-see, and you know what, I'm actually just gonna do the Kill Bills together, because truthfully, this really is one movie. And Kill Bill, Volume 1 and 2 together, whatever you want to call it, the complete Kill Bill cycle, is a must-see. Because remember when I said Pulp Fiction was sort of like he turned in his thesis at the end of the semester? Well, Kill Bill is his doctorate. He's going for the full enchilada here. This is everything he's been building towards including the fact that it has less and less human emotion, less and less things to actually connect to in a very real world sense, but more and more to get thrills out of in a heightened movie universe sense, right? We are in full surreal territory where this is not the real world. This is the super cool Kill Bill samurai world and it's bleeping amazing. I'm bleeping myself, Craig, I'm bleeping myself. Well. We want to know if there was a nope. And there is fully a nope. Death Proof is a joke. It feels cheap. And I know that Tarantino and Rodriguez, the whole point was they were doing Grindhouse. And in some ways they were trying to show how easy it was to make cheap, really good, exciting movies that people will go to the theater to pay for. Like, ah, and he made his worst movie. It's like half a sketch. It's some monologues by Kurt Russell and then Zoe Bell on a car. And Zoe Bell on a car is awesome. Incredible stunt work. The fight at the end is fun. The ironic, getting the twist, you know, upending the bad guy. Okay, fine. It's just a zero. I'll never watch this movie again. <laughs> you catch me watching this movie somewhere, you just slap me on the back real hard like, ah, gotcha. It ain't gonna happen. Inglorious 
bastards. It's resting here because my finger wouldn't move it far enough, but it is, of course, a must-see. It's the tail end of the must-sees, and it might be the last must-see. We'll see. We must. <laughs> but Inglorious Bastards, come on, man. It just crushes. It's really not a story as much as it is six or seven loosely connected scenes that are incredible to watch and very taut. So it's like six short films all starring most of the same characters and kind of generally heading in the same direction, but not really related. But that's okay. It's Pulp Fiction in a war. Pitt's great. That's a weirdo performance. Everyone in the Bastards are great. It's just, it, you got to see Inglorious Bastards. It's so much fun. Which brings me to Django. Django's a we get it for me because I just saw Inglorious Bastards. And then a couple years later, here comes Django. And he's done the same thing. This is where Tarantino has entered his, oh, wait a minute. I don't have to do period pieces like they really happen, bro. I'm just gonna like change history, bro. And it's so funny in Inglorious Bastards. When they get Hitler, you're like, ah, oh, I didn't think they would get Hitler because they didn't get Hitler. And I, ah, it's so surprising and fresh. When you get to Janko and they're like, yeah, we're gonna have the slaves ultimately get one over on the slave owners and it's the revenge thing. You're like, ah, you like Inglorious Bastards. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I got Christoph Waltz playing this amazingly charismatic, engaging sort of central character who you follow throughout. Wow. You mean like Inglorious Bastards? He was great in that. He's fine in this. But guys, so there you go. We get it. It's full of great performances. It might be my favorite Leonardo DiCaprio performance of all time, but we get it. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Two nopes. Can there be two nopes? Bro, there can be two nopes. The Hateful Eight is a nope for me. If you like this movie, please come down in the comments and tell me why it's good what you like about this. Like, do you not like other Tarantino movies? And then this one, you're like, ah, he finally dialed it in for me. Or do you excuse the things about it that aren't that good? Because it's like, it's Tarantino talking Tarantino stuff. How can that be bad? Are you one of those people? I'm not one of those people. Hateful Eight has one thing going for it. The end is bonkers. Like it gets to such an insane place <laughs> with the character's actions. <laughs> That I really like, at the end I was like, okay, fine. I'm not mad that I watched the whole thing. But that was my review. Okay. You guys like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, right? You like it? You think like Brad Pitt's really cool when he beats up Bruce Lee out of nowhere for no reason? And you think like Leo Dio is really good? Kind of like doing his old man aging Hollywood bit where he's more sympathetic than maybe he's ever been before. Nope, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. I almost did it. I almost must, I almost must seed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but I couldn't do it. Guys, this script is, I don't know if it's even a script to be honest. Brad Pitt's whole thing with Bruce Lee is just a goofball wrenched in like weird scene to make Brad Pitt look super powerful. So that later you'll know he's super powerful when he beats up like three hippie cultists that are all on drugs. And I get that he's on drugs too. You know what I mean? That I don't get that at all. DiCaprio is good. Not saying that. I'm just saying, remember when I brought up that whole revisionist history thing that Tarantino was so in love with? Well, he does it again, but it's getting like less and less impactful each time. Now it's a revisionist history of the Sharon Tate murders that some of us kind of remember? We get it, bro. We get it, I get it. Maybe you love it and that's okay. You must see it, I must get it. Well, shoot, that's it. 10 movies on a tier list. You must see Reservoir Dogs. You must see Pulp Fiction. You must see both Kill Bills if you can find it stitched together. I don't know, does that exist somewhere? That would be amazing. And you gotta see Inglorious Bastards, guys. That is the one revisionist history movie he made out of the set that's, to my mind, perfect. We get the others, and I stand by those nopes. Fight me in the comments on these nopes, guys. I, I love rabid Tarantino fans. 
please see me in the comments. And come back next time for another tier list, man. We live here, only on VHS. Take a moment, Craig. Thanks for watching, everyone. Oh, and please like and subscribe. Check out more of our videos. Leave a comment. Or don't. You do you.